Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of Serie A. Uh, I'll probably do, I was really thinking, um, should I do the review, should I wait for the midweek games and maybe do now a Premier League one, but in the end I have to, have to say uh, the excitement in me now is so big and it may not be there anymore on Thursday that I think it makes sense to uh, have this one. This match day rekindled my joy this season for Serie A. Yes, Milan is a title fight. Milan is a title fight that was not expected and uh, the realization I had last week and uh, in, the up, in, the, in the past few weeks already, Milan is probably not going to win the title. However, uh, it completely escaped me, to be honest. Uh, as a nice byproduct, Milan have already clinched a Champions League spot this week. With uh, four rounds to go. Boy, that is, you know, and it's kind of uh, almost a secondary thing, but uh, given where Milan was, this is already a huge achievement. So no matter what happens in this title race, and I still very much hope it will go the Rossoneri way, although I honestly, I think that Inter are the best team and are in such a role uh, that it is hard to see at the moment uh, them tripping up. But given all that, it's a, hu it's a hugely enjoyable season, despite all the uh, not-so-great games. But Milan have been really, really, really successful. And this week really hit at home. And there's also a fight in this team that, uh, you know, I was not willing to acknowledge probably uh, this uh, past week. I and I'm uh, overjoyed with that, to be honest. So really, really, really good. I mean, I the title for this video was... Um, even by, you know, uh, let's say uh, Sunday at 10, at 10 o'clock, I mean, I'm always thinking about how would I uh, summarize this. I, I, it was just into just too dominant. No. Staying in the title race. That's it. Staying in the title race with grit, glory and everything. It was, it was just exhilarating on a day that... Generally, I have to say, I was not uh, all that enjoyed, but that really hit it home for me. And yeah, even the stats buried out, Milan have been the big winners of this match day. A uh, huge shift, huge shift. Um, the big winner of the teams that I know, because the biggest winner, of course, is Salernitana, who might pull out an incredible escape again through coach Nicola, uh, who is kind of the guy to pull out a miraculous uh, uh, saving missions. I think that his most famous was Crotone. Um, he also, I think last season he did, uh, he largely helped with Torino. Now he probably is doing it with Salernitana, um, which yeah, for me is a little bit uh, double edged. I mean, I would love to see it because I think they bring something to it. And given that this was a team that was already out would be really, really fun to see to make them this big escape, to get a little bit more excitement into this bottom uh, fight. But then I also uh, a little bit feel hard. Uh, it, it, it's a little bit tough uh, to Cagliari, who despite all the negative noises around them, I always feel like, yeah, this is a team that actually should be in Serie A. So, yeah, that's very, very close. Let's go to the games. I mean, uh, no, before that, I mean, the other thing is that now it is confirmed, we already said last week, that it was a, a, a case of the two Milan teams fighting for, for, for a title. If there was ever a chance for Napoli to come back, now this is done. Napoli imploded in a story that is, is, is that in itself a story. However, as I said, for, for me, it really started out in the Roma. This was my last big hope in many ways. And if you watch last week's video, I'm saying this, yeah, I don't have much hope for, Inter, for Milan winning the title. Really, again, I need to stress the title was never the goal. Now, it's but it's just um, the Milan fan base is so hungry for this title. And also, uh, I think the additional effect is that if Inter win this title, they are at 20. Milan is at 18. And it's so close. I mean, it would be nice to pull 19, 19. And then if Milan wins the title, they are the first ones to get two stars. Well, uh, I kind of have resigned myself to the fact. And this is where I, I, I think that uh, the pain in a way comes. Uh, that you have to acknowledge, okay, Inter have won more titles. I mean, it's still very much neck and neck, but, you know, they will uh, proudly parade their second star. And I have to say, I mean, Inter really played brilliantly against Roma. 
Uh, I was happy that Roma played in their first team jerseys, but uh, you know, first jersey jersey, you know, that is the uh, the kind of bluish black against uh, the the red. But that was my only all, only thing at that. That it was joyful. Uh, if I was neutral, I think one could really enjoy how Inter were playing. They were just in a different league, and it was this kind of dominant performance against the Roma team. That one definitely has to say that um, they were outclassed, although they have been turning it around. But I also feel that this Roma team doesn't have much to play for any, anymore. They more or less need to focus on the game against Leicester on Thursday, which might have played into Inter's hands there. And you know, Mourinho against his uh, former fan base, who still adores him, and once the game was safe, uh, celebrated him, which he milked uh, out the maximum of it. Um, you know, maybe he kind of said, yeah, let's hand this one to Inter. I really thought of, if I look at the remaining games, this was maybe the last really huge challenge for Inter on the way to the title. Uh, Dumfries, brilliant move. Brozovic, absolutely uh, in another league. I mean, I, I, I think it was the second goal where it was just almost almost every pass was a one-touch pass until it came. It, it, it was brilliant. And that... Uh, the vermin, Jalanoglu, uh, is also, I think, assisted too and was also involved in the other one. Uh, just, just speaks in what a great shape shape they allowed Dramatinos make it 3 0, at which point they turned off the game. In disgust, to be honest, but you also had to just acknowledge how great Inter were at this point. Uh, very, very late on, um, uh, it, it, um, uh, Mikitarian pulls one back to make it 3 1, but I think. When it was 3-0, this was every bit of 3-0 that was out there. And at that point, uh, my only thoughts were how dominant are Inter. They are just an unstoppable force if they they have found their mode more, more again. And it was, again, coming off the international break, playing Juventus, getting this a little bit uh, lucky win, but they got it. And now it is all uh, Inter. It looks like all Inter. However... We'll talk. There might be a twist in 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 the tale. I didn't even watch the late Robert in Hellas and Sampdoria. Um, I wish I would have seen Salernitana for your, for your, for your Fiorentina. Salernitana, who already won midweek in Udine, win against Fiorentina again. A Fiorentina team that is not good on the road. It has to be said that they, they, they have not been a good road team. But still, this is a Salernitana team that I have declared, and not I, but many experts have declared. Uh, I don't want to call myself an expert. I'm just uh, a connoisseur, but you know, you know where we get. They were done and dusted. They were about to get thrown out of the league at the beginning of of of, of the year uh, until finally someone picked uh, up, uh, pick 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 up because Lotito, the owner of Lazio, also owns Sassanitana, which should not happen. They get a two-one win, and of course, the big scene is when Coach Nicola um, takes a juice, throws him, and then. Holds it up in a way uh, to uh, to admonish a player. It was just classic Italian stuff in in many ways. Sanitana get the late uh, win through Bonazzoli goal, and I gotta say they actually did some smart business um, to get certain players in that are now gelling and you know getting Coach Nicolin, who had the first game against Milan, where suddenly. This was supposed to be an easy win for, for, for Milan, one of the top points dropped that I do regret. However, they really, really dug in and deserved that win. And for Fiorentina this season, um, I think Fiorentina are one of the revelations of the season overall. But at the moment, the season is going a little bit flat. And I hope it continues this way and you will see in just a sec. Bologna uh, remain unbeaten, four games unbeaten, 2-2, uh, may this continue. Uh, but the big other game that we have to talk about is Empoli Napoli. Poli uh, Poli. Empoli against Na Napoli. Um, coach, um, what's his name? Uh, Spalletti, uh, of course, lives close to Empoli, <laughs> which, yeah, he is a Tuscan coach. Uh, it was all Napoli. Napoli was cruel cruising in this game. Uh, Mertens gives them an early lead uh, in a game that they uh, really fairly had under control. And right after they have Insigne, makes it 2-0. Uh, two, two, two and you might think, yeah, uh, Inter, although Inter is so dominant, Napoli still can make a challenge. Maybe they finish in second place or whatsoever. And then they completely imploded. Absolutely imploded. Uh, first, uh, Scotsman Henderson 
uh, pulls back a goal. Um, not good defending there. And then uh, the equalizer just three minutes later by Pino Pinamonte is like what happened to Manchester City just a week ago, uh, where the goalkeeper just has the ball and can get away, and Pinamonte is there to head it, head it home. And in the 88th, after Bayrami assist, Pinamonte makes it 3 2. I think what I heard, this was the first time that a Napoli team had won a 2-0 lead since 1948 or something like crazy like that. I think it's only the second team ever to let go of a 2-0 lead in the last 10 minutes of a game. This is an uh, implosion of epic proportions and it um, characterizes Napoli to a T in many a way. Napoli have something just about, they have all the talent. I would actually say of the three uh, current title contenders. Inter is the most talented, but Napoli is right there. And then there's Milan. One has to be absolutely clear about this. However, there is something about Napoli, something about this club that just does not click. Because always late in the season, they throw away their great position to potentially win a title. And this is something that definitely has to be looked into. And it does not help. I mean, I hear already that uh, De Laurentiis wants to send them to Retiro, blah, blah, blah. Which is just such an uh, asinine way of dealing uh, with, with it. I cannot begin to explain to you how stupid this is. Uh, but I think there's something in the culture of the club. And uh, De Laurentiis has to be given loads of credit for saving Napoli and making it a profitable club because it has not been for the longest of times and Napoli uh, you may or may not know I remember in the early 2000s was down in the third tier he propped them up they are a mainstay they are regular in Europe and they most likely will also qualify for the Champions League again but this Napoli team over the past five, six years, should have won at least one title. They were talented enough to do so. And that is something that really has to be uh, properly analyzed. I'm afraid it will not. It will just go into polemics because there is not this calm. It, um, Napoli is the classic powder keg club. Loads of emotions, but too little, uh, you know, too little um, tactically or shrewd thinking. Is happening at that club and I think this is what uh, in in the end uh, turns them towards the other uh, to the implosion a huge result also in the battle for relegation where Genoa with a win over Cagliari basically pulls Cagliari back into the relegation race that we thought was not gonna happen I don't think a Genoa will survive the oldest club in Italy, but uh, they have been, uh, I mean, last season was quite, quite good, but in the season before, they always have been teetering on the edge of re relegation, but always survived. I think this, this, this time around, they might not, but what they did is, with that win, they might pull Cagliari into it as, uh, as well. A Cagliari team who has been rather, rather underwhelming, one has to say. Uh, whenever I watch Cagliari, yes, there's a lot of fight in, in them, but that's about it. It's not very smart, smart to watch. And I think uh, the coach is Walter Mazzari, who is one of those coaches that, yeah, at Napoli he did maybe a few good things, but overall uh, he has not done anything ever since. And so we're at Lazio Milan. A game I was sitting down uh, and said, yeah, okay, Milan will definitely need, need, need a win there. Although I think at the point already I, I realized that Milan is more or less qualified for the Champions League. Uh, with all the results they are going that the way, although you know with the win, uh, you can. But it looked really, really good, and and this actually eased my tensions to kind of realize, yeah, we have qualified for the Champions League. Yeah, I'm already saying we. The games didn't start well. Uh, Milinkovic Savic. I mean, uh, the defending defense that has been rock solid was a little bit unsourced so the, and, and immobile. The fourth minute goals in. Then um, the next five ten minutes, Nap, uh, Lazio. I'm about to say uh, Nap, Lazio was a teeny bit threatening, and then Milan took control of the game, but in typically Milan fashion, playing the pretty stuff, but being way too complicated in front of goal. Either shooting too early or shooting too late, not squaring the pass off to the other, Leo, uh, who, who is, can be maddening and brilliant at the same time. I mean, he had a move in there where he made a brilliant turn, goes past the passive fence, but instead of uh, playing it over to Giroud, who is on the other side free, he takes a shot and it goes in the side netting. Uh, this is the stuff that uh, really drives me crazy uh, with Leon Milan in general. And a game that at the half, and Cassie also missed, I think, one or two shots where I'm thinking, yeah, 
go to Barcelona. I think uh, Kessie was brilliant last season. I think he was one of the main reasons that Milan finished top four and finished second in the league. But this season he's a shadow of his former self. And for that reason, I'm more or less willing. Okay, we can find another one. Uh, this Kessie is not there. And especially, although uh, he puts in his fighting qualities, it's not of the high quality that, that they're accustomed to. However, in the second half, it all paid off. Second half, I mean, it should have been level, in my opinion, already the first half, the second half, it was all Milan, uh, especially the first um, around, uh, up until like the 60th, 63rd minute, Milan was a real barrage of chances. And Leao finally assists Giroud to make it 1-1 in the 50th minute. Giroud getting another important goal, and Giroud always uh, scores against the big ones. So I really was happy about that one. Uh, and then, uh, you know, creating a few more chances. But again, the end product is not there. If Milan will have, will, will have a striker that can put the ball in net, or no, I think we have strikers that can put ball, ball in net, but uh, have uh, attackers that are a little bit more aware of what is happening up front, I think Milan would already have that title in the back. Honestly, because the last three weeks, uh, ever since the international break, you would have won these games that you haven't been winning. In any case, uh, it just added to the drama. Um, Giroud comes off in the 60, 68 uh, for Ibrahim Himic come on, also Brahim Diaz come o- o- off on the Rebic come on. Not the, and then you know Messias and uh, Krunic uh, a, a slightly later. These exchanges, I know this could work if they would play up to, to, to the standard, but they have not been doing that yet. But suddenly with Rebic and Krunic, uh, there was a little bit more life in the in the, in, the, in the attack, especially uh, Kroonish and taking over from Messias. He is uh, such an uh, for, for me, he's a very underrated rate player. He's not flashy, but he does the work. And if he's um, called for, he usually delivers with without being stellar. He's not the player that you pick out as being. This is the best player. No, def- definitely not. But he's he is a pretty uh, good. A substitute to come in or, you know, as a, a, um, a fill-in player for, for the squad. He rarely disappoints, to be honest. And um, while Milan then had trouble and uh, for most of the time, I got to say, Zlatan was kind of invisible, it all came down to stoppage time um, where um, a cross come, 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 comes in, Zlatan has the wisdom to not head it towards his goal because it was not a good, good cross, but he just had, had it in, into the path of Tonali, who potentially pushes a Cherby over and then taps it in. It was not an easy tap in and makes it 2-1 for Milan. Throws off his shirt, runs into the curva, big sense of celebrations. In a game that was technically, it was more or less a home game for Milan. Why? The Lazio fans were protesting the price Paul policy that against the big uh, teams in the curva you have to pay 40 bucks, which I actually f- fully support because that's a crazy price. Especially in, well, the um, the Olympico in Rome might be one of the few stadiums with a track, the other one being the San Paolo, uh, San Paolo not the Maradona Stadium, where there's still enough at- atmosphere. Uh, I have been once in that curva. It's not a fun sight. It is everything of an athletics track. If you're up there, you get some form of it. If you're down there, you barely see any, anything. It reminds me of the old Olympic Stadium in Munich, uh, where it was similar. So I totally understand that they were uh, pro trotting And thank you. Thank you, Lazio fans, because Milan fans owned that stadium. Felt very much like a home game. And then we had uh, Juve uh, yesterday evening turning around um, the game against Sassolo. I mean, Raspadori gave Sassolo a third and a half minute lead. Dybala and then uh, lay, later on Moise can't turn around. Not a game that I saw much, but I just wanted to add it for uh, completeness. So in the standings, uh, it is now a case for two Milan still on top, but with a game less. It will end uh, in the midweek, then we will have a level table at the table. Uh, the chances are very much in favor, uh, three quarters in the only one quarter chance, more or less, for Milan, uh, which seems to be fair at this very moment. 
Uh, we also see that Milan and Inter are for sure in the Champions League. And if I see with four matches, so Roma can reach 70. So Napoli would just need one win, a uh, superior goal difference, maybe four points and Napoli are in two. And it doesn't look bad for Juve either. So I think those four teams are the other ones in the Champions League. I had a thought the other day. Um, I actually do like, in a way, the idea that uh, uh, UEFA in the Champions League seedings puts the champions of the top eight nations in pot one. But I think for the nations that have four teams in there, you should put the second place team in pot two, the third place team in pot three, and the fourth place team in pot four. I think that would add a little bit more excitement and also gives you more incentive to not just uh, cruise like, for instance, Chelsea does. No, not cruising, but you know. Uh, to make a little bit more fight because second place would mean something. You would get a better seeding. Just saying it, it will also be happy because I foresee Milan, if they go, go in the Champions League, do not be in pot two uh, if they finish second, but rather in a, uh, barely making it probably into pot three. Something like that. Uh, Roma Lazio seems stuck in fifth and sixth with a, a tied with Fiorentina and Atalanta. I think those will kind of fight for the Europa League and Conference League spots. One of them will miss out and in a way Atalanta don't look good at the moment. But let's focus on the bottom. Salernitana with six points from the last two games suddenly find themselves level with Genoa. Three points off of Cagliari. I told you Cagliari is being pulled into that because Genoa won against them. And suddenly, uh, Calgary 33%, Genoa 88%, and Salernitana 72%. And Salernitana seems to be the informed team there. And they have a game in hand. So if they win that one, they are level with Cagliari. And that we'll see. That game is actually against Venezia, who are the last place team. And I'm very sorry, but Venezia will not make it. So it's very possible. But that will be played um, on the 5th of May. But we have makeup games in, in, in between. Fiorentina, Udine. Atalanta, Torino, I mean, for Fiorentina, probably a big one uh, in the standings because with a win, you could um, go ahead of Roma. So that would actually set you a little bit um, more on track for Europa League spot. Roma might actually win the Conference League, so this could also help them in the Europa League as, as well. So we have potential for eight Italian teams. I don't really think that they will win, but I would be happy if they do. Uh, and then a the big one, Bologna, Inter. At least for me, uh, I so pray that Bologna will win, uh, will get something uh, from their continued their unbeaten run because it will mean that Milan are still on top of the table. Um, but I think that the, uh, the scale in general, I said it already in the uh, vi video after the cup, Inter have now two more games to play than Milan. So they have two, um, uh, two midweek games which could play into that. I actually could see that an Inter on the weekend, they might win the one against Bologna. But on the weekend they have to travel to Udine, which is not a nice place to go where they actually could pull something. For me, it also plays a little bit in the cards. I think the Fiorentina have this midweek game. And then Fiorentina travel to Milan. Although I think this will be a tough game for Milan. I think. The big one is Sampdoria against Genoa. Yeah, Derby della Lanterna, one of the nicest derbies you can see in Italy. We have Roma against Bologna. I think it's also quite an interesting one uh, there. So quite a few things. And, you know, if we look, uh, Salernitana will have to play at Atalanta, maybe not that easy. Um, and Cagliari against uh, Verona. Yeah, <laughs> I think the relegation battle is quite interesting as well. So yeah, that was it from me with my thoughts on the past Serie A weekend. As I said, I'm feeling much more happy now. The Champions League is secured and the title is a bonus. And I maintain Milan should have six more points. And with those six more points, I think the, uh, I would anyway be super smiles. It is not, Milan are not the best team in the league. However, if they win the title, this is just uh, pure resilience and pure fighting spirit. And that would be a fun thing to see as well. In any case, please let, let me know who you think will win, win, win the title, how things are developing in Serie A. Give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.